This is huge. Mm. Uncle Dan. Hey. Believe me, some people get over 100,000 Ghana cities from one per year. 130, 1 billion Ghana. 100,000 Ghana cities. Can you enroll me from now? One. We'll talk about that. <laughs> I think that we are concentrating too much on real estate, oil and gas. Why do Ghanaians think that the number of houses <laughs> you have yep. and the number of shopping malls you have is your worth? That's number one. Number two, why do they think that everyone must be interested in those things? Because I don't have interest. If I get money, I reinvest. Yeah, yeah. I reinvest. And almost everyone wants to go into real estate. Plot here, plot there, plot here, plot there. Everyone is. And I tell you, it's not even all of the real estate that are profitable. But here, it's also green gold. Green gold. I like this, that. This is green gold. And you've seen and you've heard the figures. But when people and counter challenge in a Greek. They say, oh, it's risky. Yeah. No, please don't treat a Greek like that. Hey, finally. Finally. Finally, we are honored. <laughs> I'm honored. I mean, this, uh, this is amazing. When I heard you were coming, uh -huh. I didn't believe that it was true. Why? So even <laughs> this morning when we're coming, I'm like, will it really happen? Are you sure she will come herself or she's going <laughs> to send, send somebody. somebody to come and then later they put... So you are most welcome. Thank you so we much. We are excited. You know... Our industry is not one of the industries that you get celebrities to come. <laughs> and it's also not an industry that is... Like people say, oh, agreek, agreek, agreek. So when we get people like you showing interest in agreek, then we're like, wow. Yeah. No, now agreek has been elevated. For, for me, I think agreek is important. Mm -hmm. um, it is the future. It should have been the future many years ago. It is. Many countries in the Western world, Australia, Holland, have been doing agriculture and they don't even have the land that we do. They don't. And so for me, on mm -hmm. my show, mm -hmm. on the diaspora mm -hmm. transition, is that right. I look at opportunities for the diaspora to come back, for Ghanaians, for black people to come back home and invest. And these are the, some of the things that we can invest in. Uncle Dan, like I said, you've done an incredible job. Thank you. Honestly, you've mm -hmm. been in the industry for what, over 20 years yes. and you're still at it, which is important. Very, very active. Where are we right now as we speak and what are we seeing? Great. Fortunately, government acquired this Dowenia Irrigation Enclave. So this place belongs to the Ministry of Agri and is managed by the Ghana Development, Irrigation Development Authority. Okay. I understand it's over 1,000 acres okay. of land that they have in this enclave. Okay. Then they have earmarked 19, 90 acres or hectares of land for greenhouse. Okay. 90 hectares for greenhouse. Now for these 90 hectares, Agri Impact, we have acquired about 40 hectares okay. for greenhouse. Okay. Now the greenhouses that we see here, is an idea of the Ministry of Finance and Ghana Exim Bank. Okay. Now, they wanted to introduce Greenhouse to address certain challenges in the country. Okay. One, how we can reduce our vegetable imports. Mm -hmm. 
Two, how we can use technology to get youth to come into agri. Okay. And the third one is how Ghanaians will also eat high quality vegetables at competitive price. Not only when you go to the supermarkets before you can get quality vegetables, but even in the open market, we should be able to get healthy vegetables. So Exim Bank decided to get into greenhouse and then they engage Agri Impact as a consulting firm. Right. We are providing turnkey service. We bring the greenhouse, we do installation, we train the people, we support oh. management, we buy from them. So if you're a young person and you are in this enclave, everything that you need, land is there. Okay. The greenhouse has been provided. Irrigation is there. Electricity is there. The technical support is there. We supply agro input. When you are done, we also buy from you. So marketing is not one of the problems that you should ever be thinking about. So we buy from you. You know how much you are earning. Mm. The moment we sell, your money is given to you. So that's the model we are practicing here. So we'll delve into the model yes. a bit more. Mm. But I want to talk about Dana Kwe. Okay. 20 years in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, you've got three patents outside in the US. Yes. You have worked with the UN. Yes. You have, you have done a lot outside. Right. What inspires me is that you didn't stay outside. Right. You came back mm. home because you saw the opportunity. You went to countries. You saw the research that they were doing. Greenhouse is not something new. It's been going on for the last 75 years in some countries. Exactly. But with Ghana, it's about, what, 20 it's to no, 15? No, no, maybe 10, 10, 10 years. years 10 years now. Okay. So what made you really delve into green farming, into agriculture? Mm, what was the passion? Why? Denta, I grew up in a very poor family in Sunyane. I was born in Apebusu in the eastern region grew up in Sunyane with my family. Very, very poor. Mother operating choba, father a farmer, mother also a farmer. We went through the mill, went through all sorts of, from Atebubu Secondary School to Mim Secondary wow. School to Sunyane Secondary School to Prempe College to Tech for first degree to Legon for second degree masters. But I had passion for a Greek, so I did a Greek in school. Okay. And when I was finishing university, mm -hmm. I told my supervisor that, Prof, may he so rest in peace, Prof Kwanza. I said, Prof, when I finish school, I'll set up my own business in agri. He said, how are you going to do it? I said, oh, no, don't worry. I'll set up a business. Fortunately for me, I did my service at Export Promotion Council. And I saw huge opportunity in service. Not just I have 1,000 acres of cocoa, I have 100 acres of oil palm, but the way that Pricewaterhouse will provide service mm. in accounting, in finance, right. in management, right. that is exactly what I wanted to do in agribusiness. Okay. And it was not common at that time. Mm. So right after school, I set up my consulting firm, Agri Impacts. And we have continued over the years doing consultancies for World Bank, Africa Development Bank, UNDP, Africa Union, NEPAD, GIZ, Danish Embassy, Netherlands Embassy, name them, in over 30 countries in Africa Wow! in the last 20 years. Now, coming home, mm -hmm. I started my work in Kashu. Okay. Early days, somewhere 95, 96, where Ghana started promoting Kashu. I was one of the consultants who were engaged in Kashu development projects. From Kashu, I came to medicinal plants. And so people used to call me, oh, the herbalist, the herbalist. <laughs> but I was looking at commercialization of medicinal plants right. because Ghana had two medicinal plants that were being traded worldwide. And Ghana was the leading supplier of these two medicinal really? plants. Yes, Griffonia and Wakanga. Okay. 
Okay. Griffonia is for weight loss. Vakanga is for memory enhancement. Oh, and I, need if, the, I need the two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can need the two. So even traditionally, the Vakanga, for example, you go into traditional settings and they will tell you that, oh, when somebody is getting mad, we use the leaf and we put in their nose. But actually, it's for memory enhancement. So Ghana is, uh, was exporting, but on a small scale. So we jump in, we did a lot of work, and in four years, Ghana's export jumped from $3.5 million to $25 million. Wow. And I was exporting myself too. Then we came to sweetness. Mm -hmm. There are four natural sweetness in the world, and Ghana has three. And we've not developed them. What? One of them is the miracle berry. They say a sweet... Um, there's a berry, it's not sweet by itself, but you put in your mouth, anything that you take becomes sweet. I don't know if you've tried oh, it. No. Oh, it's not sweet, but you put it in your mouth. You can take lemon, you can take oh, anything that, that is, is sour. sour. Wow, tastes sweet. super sweet. So I work with Bioresources International. We're trying to see how it can be processed and, and, and sold in the U.S. We're selling... The, um, we, we, we converted part into powder. Okay. And that powder, we were selling uh, one kilo for $500 in the Whoa. US. Yes, one kilo, just the powder. And it wasn't like a fine powder, it's a crude powder. You just need five kilos of the berries. Mm -hmm. It gives you one kilo of the powder. And it was going for $500. That's At that time, one. we needed technology to improve on the processing, but nobody will listen to us. So that story too ended. Then came the greenhouse. Well, which, which, which things did you patent in the US? What? One was in uh, Miracle Berry okay. and two in Combo Butter. Combo now, Butter. Combo combo butter. butter. <laughs> the Combo Butter is, um, in Ghana we call it uh, Pamprana. Pamprana. And then it has, it has another name too. But it's grown in the wild. It's like a tree. Okay. These days, people even cut it. But there is some oil in it that is unique. And there's the only plant in the world that has the highest concentration of that oil. And it is found in Ghana. So we were extracting the oil and exporting to U.S. and Canada. And if you have gout or joint pains, yes. You just need to apply the combo butter on it, and, and that's, that's it. Hey, I need some of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then we realized that the horse industry, you know the joints? Yes. So they were adding it to the feet wow. for horses in the U.S. So all of this is, is in, in Ghana. In Ghana, but I got tired of always trying to explain to people the opportunities. So at some point I said, okay, let me come to mainstream agriculture. But then the, in the mainstream agriculture, I use greenhouse as the entry. Okay. So that's how I came into greenhouse. So are there still opportunities oh, for people are. who want to invest in the two or three things that you've mentioned? There are. Even our indigenous spices, I was moving from Las Vegas, uh, California. I go to Anaheim. I go to Baltimore, trying to promote our indigenous spices, the Huintia the yeah. form wisa and the suru wisa and then there's another one called lipia it's in northern ghana they use it to spice dog meat but it's very spicy wow. and people love it outside the country so we do packaging i'll go to trade i go to japan to go and promote. but when we get the orders then we there's no deliver. supply we get the orders and no supply so to some extent i i also am a human so i got yeah. tired and i gave up and I decided to come into mainstream. Now I've seen that people have started doing Sobolo. We started talking about Sobolo, yes. And we had 3,000 farmers in Senegal, women, who were producing Sobolo and were exporting to Canada. And at that time, it was so new in Ghana, but now you can find Sobolo. I don't know where they grow it, but I have not seen anyone with like 
10 acres of uh, Sobolo farm, but I see that now Sobolo is, yeah, huge is, on now. The, is on the market. And we're trying to promote Sobolo long time ago with Lipia, Lipia tea. So we've paid <gasps> some deals. You have. Yes, you have. We, we've paid some deals for Mother Ghana. But now our effort has been in the greenhouse, but that's not the only thing we do as a green. Okay. Uh, greenhouse may constitute about 10 20 percent of the things that we do because we are still in consultancy okay fantastic we are still doing project management brilliant so uh, but now the greenhouse has become like something that everyone it it it, it it's attracts, attracts yeah it's attracting a lot when we wanted to go into greenhouse we didn't have money so we said let us do wood <laughs> so we got some designs from south africa we got some carpenters to come and try it for us at Brikusu, very, very small okay. greenhouse. And then when he finished, we brought the net, the irrigation things we imported from South Africa. And we knew that agricultural uh, inputs are duty free. So we went, we wanted to clear. They said, no, even though it's duty free, we need some clearance from the Ministry of Agriculture. By the time we got the clearance, the demurrage was higher than the, than actual, the duty, oh. and we didn't have money, so that ended our... We didn't even clear the things from the pot. Oh so that ended our first stage of greenhouse. And you, did, you still didn't want to give up? No, 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 I didn't give up. But thanks to SDF, the Skills Development mm -hmm. Fund, mm -hmm. yeah. they advertised, and initially we thought, oh, this one is politically motivated, and but finally we said, okay, let us put in an application. Lo and behold, You've we won. didn't know anybody. We won. And then we got $420,000. Wow. And that gave us the opportunity to set up the first greenhouse training center in Ghana wow. at Brekuso. Oh. So we had moved from wood and zero, and now we had the largest greenhouse training center in the country. And it is still there. It's still there. And we get people from Nigeria, Gambia, uh, Liberia. They all come for... Training. training okay so moving from there then the exim bank came in so exim bank actually uh, transformed the greenhouse the ministry of agri had done some with agri top okay but the scale is not up to the size mm. so first we brought 100 of these greenhouses mm. one is 640 square meters which is a little smaller than a plot of land, land okay. it's not up to a plot of land but believe me, some people get over 100,000 Ghana cities from one per year. 100,000 Ghana cities from one. Whoa. 100 titi, 1 billion Ghana. Wow. 100,000 Ghana cities. Can you enroll me from now? One. We'll talk about that. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about So we call it the cocoa in the city. Damn. Somebody has cocoa, somebody has oil palm, somebody has coconut. You can also come into the greenhouse. And the lifespan of this greenhouse is over 40 years. The same as having cocoa and coconut and yeah. oil palm. The difference between the two is that when you are doing vegetables, you turn like cocoa, you grow it for two, three years before. The vegetables sometimes, if you are doing uh, cucumbers, four weeks. Okay. You are harvesting, wow. so it's faster. It's faster, and almost every now and then you are seeing mm. money. But it's is it organic? A lot of people are saying it's not organic. You know, you guys are putting a lot of chemicals. What What is the difference? As a technical man, my mm -hmm. definition of organic mm -hmm. is different from layman's definition of organic. Okay. So let explain. me explain. Uh -huh. When you say something is organic, mm -hmm. as a technical man, it has to go through certain processes and certain certification okay. before you can say this is organic. Right. Now, you can also produce something not organic, but high quality with less agro input application. So the whole world, I'm yet to see where someone produces from greenhouse as organic. Okay. But in our greenhouse, almost everything that we use it's natural base. Okay. So you don't have a situation where if you enter, you see that the water that we are using is dirty. We we um, 
first of all, we take it to a tank. It goes through purification okay. process. Then we will filter and then it will pass through UV right. to kill any pathogen and microorganism in the water before we bring it to water the plant. You will disinfect okay. your feet. Okay. 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 So now we're clean. Yes. Okay. So this is tomatoes. Yes. And I'm sure this might be the first time you are seeing tomatoes growing like this. So, Buama, you can now take our honorable dental through <laughs> and explain. Okay. You're welcome once again. Thank you. Okay, so, as you said, this is the owner of the tunnel. She's called Ivy. Okay. This tomato Hi, you are seeing, Ivy. How are you? So These tomatoes you are seeing are barely five weeks old. Oh. And as you can see, they have already started fruiting. Yeah. By next three weeks, we'll start harvesting. We have that a, quick? Yeah, very mm -hmm. quick eight weeks you start harvesting. When you start harvesting, you can do between three to four months of continuous harvest. As compared to the open field where they are just able to harvest for three weeks or maximum one month. This is a 640 square meter greenhouse. And we have about 1,200 plants here. We are looking for an average um, yield of four or five kilos per plant. That's, that's good. Yeah, you look at an average of four or five kilos per plant. As um, you, you might have known about greenhouse, we don't use soil. Yeah. And in some instances, you can use soil, but we don't use soil. We okay. use cocoa pit. Cocoa pit. Yeah, that's from the, the hacks of coconut. Mm. That's what we use to cultivate our, our plants. Um, because of that, we have to feed the plants through what we call drip irrigation. Okay. So as you go to the hospital and you are being infused and you get drip, drip. that's the same technology that's we use. That's what the plants are that, getting. That's what they are getting. Yeah. So they are hosed under the the dripper line okay, here okay. we mix the right amount of fertilizers in the tank over there we calculate based on the stage of the plant the weather and then we have the amount of fertilizer that we 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 give to the okay. plant this plant that you are seeing here in the next three or four weeks might be taller than us it will grow tall wow. that's why you have this rope that we used to trellis we call it trellising so just as yam creeps around the rope that is this the same one, oh. technology we employ. That is why we are able to harvest for a very long, long time. Okay. And as you can see, the fruits are not lying on the ground. So you yeah. get the, the quality of, yeah. of, of, of fruit um, as well. So in brief, this is how the, the, the technology works. Okay. So Ivy is working. What, is, what, is I, what does Ivy do in terms of like day-to-day? -day? What's her name? Ivy, yes. Ivy, yeah. What does she do in terms of day-to-day? Ivy, I see there's something in your hand and you're spraying. What, what exactly are you doing? Um, I'm pollinating the flowers because it's indoor. Okay. You don't have insects or bees coming to pollinate the flowers. So you need to apply the hormones to make the fruits bigger. Right. Okay. So you, you are applying the hormones so onto the, the, open the, open the open flowers. flowers. Okay. Like, which one? Is this one closed so or open? Do. So that's true. Okay. And it's the flowers that turn into the fruits. It's the flowers that, that turn into yeah, the fruits. Yeah, so all these ones will turn into fruits. Wow. Yes, but well, you have That's to incredible. pollinate. So you pollinate. have to do that every day? No, not no. every day. Sometimes twice a week okay. or once a week. Okay, okay. And what other things do you have to do to the um, plant? Usually when I come in the morning, mm -hmm. I have to um, give nutrients. Okay. And the nutrients, we give it um, in stages. Okay. So for a day, I can give like... Um, four times or two times depending on the weather also i have to um, trellis the plants around the rope okay. to make it stand vertically okay. and sometimes you have to give foliar sprays to the plants okay. yes and sometimes harvest it takes a lot of time to even yeah, have for now mm -hmm. i'm not yeah. harvesting but when the fruits are ready you harvest two times in a week or three times, times in, a week. in a week that's brilliant Mm. Because I, I learned that we import a lot from Burkina Faso. 
when it comes to tomatoes. And mm. a lot of our tomatoes also get thrown away because we don't get to use it or they rot. We all grow tomatoes when the rain starts. Okay. And we don't have the storage facilities. We are also not growing tomatoes that the processing companies can use. Okay. We are growing table tomatoes, but not industrial tomatoes. Okay. So when uh, you are growing, I'm growing, she's growing, over a period of time, all of us will have our harvest. And why is there storage? None. And because of that, then you tend to have high post-harvest loss. In six weeks, maximum eight weeks, there's no more tomato on the market. Rotten. Everything is gone. The season is over oh. because we are rainfall dependent. So the season is over and now we have to bring from Burkina, Burkina How much Faso. are we importing from Burkina? Oh, we are doing like um, 75,000 tons a year. 75,000 5, tons. How much does that equivalent to? In some of the markets, uh -huh. for example, like Accra, they can bring about 24 trucks a day. A day? A day to Accra. Some will go to Tudu, some will go to Aboblochi, some will go to Ashaman, but a minimum of 24 trucks a day. Kumasi is doing between 19 and 21 trucks a day. A day. And then Takrade is also bringing from Burkina, and some people will go from Cape Coast to Takrade and go and get their tomatoes. tomatoes. So all in much, all, we spend um, close to like $100 million every year on bringing tomatoes. tomatoes. Into the country. $100 million. $100 million dollars of tomatoes, tomatoes that is imported yes. into the country. Yes, and that excludes tomato paste. Wow. This is just the fresh tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes. So the good thing about greenhouse is that it's not weather dependent. Yeah, yeah, all so year round. Year round, any time you want to grow, okay. you grow. So do you already have people that you um, export to? You have we, a ready we, market? We sell it locally and it's not enough. What? They come here to come and buy. It's not enough? And, no, no, it's not enough. Who doesn't like quality things? <laughs> 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 so this particular greenhouse belongs also to Ivy. Ivy. Okay. So wow. she's the owner and the manager of, of her own, own farm. Oh, that's uh, amazing. So, so people can invest in their yes. own. So people people can invest. This model from Exim Bank mm -hmm. is said that if you look at Ivy, she may not have the capital. Yeah, to invest. To invest. Yeah. So Exim Bank has paid for all those things. She comes in, she's producing and she's paying back gradually. She has about right. four years okay. to pay whatever Exim wants her to pay. After that, for the next 34 years, this greenhouse is wow. her property. Hey, Ivy. <laughs> so wow, you secured a rich, your... a rich woman yeah. in, in some few years to Absolutely. come. Absolutely. But she has committed. She's Ever since we started, she's been here. Greenhouse farming, is it capital intense? I mean, are we importing all of the fertilizers, the nutrients that you're talking about? Are we producing anything in Ghana? Hmm. The entire MBE. <laughs> <laughs> Greenhouse is capital intensive worldwide. Okay. It's capital intensive. Here we have partnership with a company called MSC in Spain. Okay. They give us the best greenhouse structures with the best price. We tried several countries and were fortunate to get MS, MSEC. And they also give us after sales service and supports us also with technical uh, production um, services. Right. Now, if you want to put up one of these greenhouses, 640 square meters, it's likely to cost between Twenty-two and twenty-eight thousand dollars. By the time we will finish installation, right. here some people are able to generate about hundred thousand Ghana cities per greenhouse per, greenhouse. per year. Okay. And the lifespan of this greenhouse is about forty years. Wow. So if you invest twenty-eight thousand dollars, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Over four or five year period, you should be able to pay back, back that money. Yeah. That money. 
and you have 35 years to of enjoy yeah. your greenhouse. There are nets and the other ones that every five years you may have to change, but they are not expensive. Okay. Coming back to, are we doing anything in Ghana? If you look down, we have cocoa pits. Mm -hmm. This is coconut husk. Okay. Now here we eat the coconut and the coconut husk has become an environmental challenge for us. Has it? But we bring this from Sri Lanka. Huh? Because you can't get quality coconut husk in the country that will give you the quality of plants that you are seeing here. So we bring them from Sri Lanka. Even though coconut... Can you imagine? In Ghana, the in coconut... In Ghana, no. And the coconut husk, have you seen how they are all scattered around? Yes. So by the time you bring everything together, purify, uh, sterilize it, get it into this, that's a business for someone On its to own. do. So now we have started trying using rice husk okay. and manure okay. so that we no longer bring the, this cocoa peat from Sri Lanka from Sri Lanka or even importing it. We have tried it. I told you about uh, Brekuso. Now it's yeah. our research center. So we have tried it there and it has worked for us. We want to start it at Dawenya here. If it works like that, then we will spread it across. We're going to walk, we're going to walk, because there's so many things to see. Mm. Ivy, thank you. Ivy, thank you. Rich woman. Uh, locations in the country, okay. but this is the largest. the largest. We have 10 at KNUST, which was commissioned by Otunfo, His oh, Royal wow. Highness, Beautiful. Majesty. Yeah. Um, we have some at K uh, UCC, okay. that was also done by the Vice Chancellor. We used to have one at Takrade, but we're having land issues, so we've moved okay. from Takrade and we've brought it to um, we are installing it now at the Technical University of Cape Coast. Oh, okay. um, then we also have some around uh, Kosomo area there. So yeah. we have it, but this is the largest, the largest. enclave what? in the country. So what about the likes of uh, uh, Tamale that has Tamale, vast land? I yes. know the weather con yes. so contributes to some of these things, but we, tell we me. We will go to another one. It's a net house. Okay. These greenhouses will not do well in Tamale because oh. of the weather. Right. But the net houses will work perfectly in, in Tamale, Tamale okay. and northern Ghana. Okay. So we are piloting a net house. We'll go there, you okay. see, even Fantastic. for export crop. Okay. And once it works, then we can now scale it out in 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 northern Ghana. Fantastic. And you know that the Tamale airport is being upgraded. Yes. So if we can scale it out and uh, we can get volumes for ex export. Then people we can, can even export right from Tamale, Tamale to, yeah. to Europe. Fantastic. So this is cucumber? Yes. Wow. And how is this done? Is this the same type of way the, um, the tomatoes are done? It's so same. Okay. Uh, irrigation. Mm -hmm. Then we are trellising. Now you feel like you are in some forest. Yeah. So you are in a forest of cucumbers. Wow. You see, nothing touches the ground. Yeah. And if you look at uh, the fruits, these mm -hmm. are the fruits, the okay. flowers, and the, and the fruits are coming. Buama, how old are? This is just four weeks. Four, four weeks, weeks old. She yes. She started harvesting already. She started harvesting so already. So we can use greenhouse to create jobs oh my for you. You you plant four weeks, you are harvesting. And I forgot to add, Ivy's tomatoes can stay three to four weeks without refrigeration. Really. Yes. That's the quality that we say. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so sometimes we put in the kitchen three to four weeks. It's, it's there. It's it stays same. Wow. Yes. So um, I don't know which crop again or what else you can do. You put in the soil four, four weeks, weeks. You are harvesting. No. And no. how often will you harvest these ones? For two to three months. Two to, two to three, three months. months. For cucumber, you can do three cycles a year. Three cycles Just a year. A year. And this one, do you harvest once a week, twice a week? For this particular variety, it's every day. Because the Mediterranean cucumber, the small one. Wow. Every day. So every day you are harvesting. Tomorrow, this one will be... Be ready. ready. And then every day you Because I can see these ones. Yeah. Yes. yes. Wow. So that's it. It's amazing. Yes. 
um, and it's, it's different from what you see outside because these are this, the these ones there's a high demand for it with better price right so, so these will go into all of the malls all the malls of, of the malls and and they come the wholesalers also come, come here in. to pick oh yes that's amazing mm. and okay so wh how much would you sell it for how the much pricing? do you sell for the material now they are doing between 15 to 18 cities a kilo 15 to 18, 18 a kilo. A kilo. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that mm. it has become profitable mm. like that. Yeah, and you are looking for this cycle, uh, this time you can do between 7 to 8 tons. Eight, uh, yeah, 7 to 8 tons. So that's, that's uh, even it? if you do 7 tons, that's 7,000 kilos, kilos times 18. 126,000. So if everything goes on well. Wow. So even if you get 4 tons, Assuming yeah. you get four tons, like 50% yeah. of what you are expecting, your 60,000 CDs, you should get it. Wow. And, it's and then you do three cycles, cycles a in year. a year. Wow. is chili peppers yes which are being uh, you know it's going to be ex exported out yes you know um, Ghana had issues with um, export of fresh vegetables yeah. to Europe because yeah. of phytosanitary conditions mm. so sometimes we were banned yes. the time we were banned from exporting they lifted the ban but we needed to put certain systems in place to enable us um, get back onto the export market. So guess how, um, in collaboration with Agri Impact and other partners, decided Which one is that- Gessal? Gessal is, uh, is, um, is a private firm okay. that is doing risk mitigation okay. in Agri. Okay. And they also want to promote exports. Fantastic. So Gessal, in partnership with Agri Impact, and other institutions we are looking at of course with ministry of agri mm -hmm. we are looking at how do we get back onto our chili export market yeah, opportunity yeah. okay so we have this net house which is for agri impacts okay also came from israel this is the one and um, sorry came from spain spain this okay. is the one that i'm saying if it works we can replicate it, it in tamale. and scale it out in Tamale and northern Ghana. Fantastic. The inside is cooler than the, the greenhouse. Now, because it is protected, you see net all around, it doesn't allow a lot of insects to come, come in. in. Right. So we minimize the amount of diseases that can come into this. And once you reduce diseases, you will also reduce the application of agrochemicals so that's why we have 10 we we had cabbage we had lettuce broccoli celery we were growing all of all them of the, here wow. all of them okay. here and we decided that okay why don't we partner and turn this whole place into the pilot of the chilies okay. so There's what you are seeing is just one month oh, okay. old and, started and, so the and started yes planning. okay and uh, when are you expecting the harvest. Yeah. Harvest. Also in a month's time. In a month's in time. So just two months. Two months will be harvesting. And this one will go straight to Europe. It's to Europe. And if it goes and we pass, then we can conclude that this planting works. the chilies in a net house will be able to meet the European requirements and Ghana can get back into our oh, export fantastic. market. So that's what we are, we are doing. But this one is soil, right? It's soil. And okay. Manure. And, and manure. manure. Okay. Soil and manure. Okay. And you see how clean it is. Very clean. Uh, yes. Very clean. So that's what we, our contribution to Ghana. That's amazing. And young people. It's brilliant. So mm. when you export, how much would you likely make from the exports from this whole 
roughly? One hectare should give us about 40 metric tons. Okay. One hectare mm -hmm. should give about 40 metric tons. This is um, a little over one acre. Okay. So let's say it's close to half of a, a hectare. hectare. Yeah. So we should be getting anything between 16 and 18 tons. Okay. Now, if I've forgotten that, it's like, I think it's about a euro per kilo. So that gives you about 18 to $20,000 from here. Not bad. No, no, not bad at all. Not bad at not all. Not bad at all. And we are looking for investors because um, the ministry has small land, agri impact. Has we have taken 80 acres. Okay. We are not done with even 40 acres. So. Oh, there's still an and, opportunity. And anyone who wants to partner, we are here to partner with that investor. Okay. And so I want to know. So somebody has $50,000 or $20,000 or $25,000 and wants to invest, what is the process? What can you do for them? First, we will bring these structures, okay. be it greenhouse or net house. We have our own engineers who do the installation. We have our technical people who will support you with production. Okay. And we also facilitate markets. Okay. So you can bring your investment. What we don't want is we take someone's investment and the person is asleep. We, we don't do that kind of okay. investment. We want them involved. We want you to be involved so you can see. So when there is a challenge, it's not like um, we are reporting something negative, but you see the processes right. yourself. When there are benefits, you also see the yourself. And you can also have your workers, Okay. but we will support with um, guidelines. Overseeing, do it yeah. this way, do it that right. way. So you don't need to engage us fully in your production okay. system unless you want to okay but you can come and then we once we are doing we are managing this enclave the 80 acre we provide water we provide electricity we provide security Fantastic. and like i said if you want us to also offtake or we'll offtake off okay from you and 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 does it okay so we want this place should be opened up and not only here the other classes government have, uh, has put up that we are looking for investors to come okay. there's a place in spain they okay. call it ameria mm -hmm. that place was a desert and full of rocks mm -hmm. and people were doing movies in ameria as i speak today they have turned that whole enclave into vegetable hub and they are producing, I think, one point something million tons of vegetables. Wow. The export of Ameria is about $2.8 billion per annum. And local supply is $2.9 billion. We've been there to You've see. And that it. is a model that we You're wish it can be replicated. So, Do you think that we are concentrating too much on real estate? Uh, um, oil and gas, uh, I don't know, different things. That even, even me, some people look at me and say, Ah, Dan, we see more check. By now, you should have had three houses, four houses, yeah. uh, put up a shopping mall, put up school. I said, No. Why do Ghanaians think that the number of houses <laughs> you have yep. and the number of shopping malls you have is your worth? That's number one. Number two, why do they think that everyone must be interested in those things? Because I don't have interest. If I get money, I reinvest. Yeah, yeah. I reinvest. And almost everyone wants to go into real estate. Plot here, plot there, plot here, plot there. Everyone is, and I tell you, it's not even all of the real estate that are profitable. It's true. Yes. It's true. Not all, uh, not all hotels are profitable. Not all guest houses are profitable. Not all schools are there are people who have built schools and they take money from other places to come and pay uh, 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 salaries of to teachers their staff, yeah. to their staff. So we present it as if that one, once you have a school or you have a house, you are done. But here it's also green gold. Green gold, I like this, that. This is green gold and you've seen and you've heard the figures. 
So if I get money today, instead of putting up a story building, I'll buy more, more of, of this, this yeah, to and invest. expand. So you mentioned about investors that invest and go to sleep. Now, we may have some of those people. So there's people that have money that want to invest and go to sleep and then you account and give them, you know, accountability of right. what has happened. Yeah. Are you able to do that as well? First, mm -hmm. a Greek investment is not treasury bill. Okay. So there are some people who want to put $100,000 and they do their calculations and they say that, okay, this $100,000, every year I should be getting X, a, y, Z. A, a, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. It's not treasury bill, it's not bond. That's not our Greek. Okay. And that's the reason why we say we don't want you to, we say, oh, Agri Impact has created an investment fund. You come and put in $100,000 for greenhouse and every year you'll be getting this amount. That's not the model. If you want to invest and you are passionate about our Greek, mm -hmm. we'll have to walk you through the pros and cons. These ones that you see might be looking so nice today. A day will come that for no reason you can come and then you have some disease that you have never experienced before. It's yeah. like COVID. Yeah. COVID came with not. Then the person comes to you, ah, you told me that I will get 10% of, of my money. So it's a contract. I'm taking my 10%. That kind of arrangement we won't do. Okay. So we want to, even if you are outside and you want us to do it, as for you having updates and be part of the process. So what I mean, don't bring us $100,000 and go and sleep. And then at the end of the year, you say, put 10,000 into my account. Yeah. And then, no, be part of the process. If you okay. are outside, you need to still get involved. With these days, you have pictures, you yeah. have videos, virtual we give well. you virtual and, 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 and everything. Okay. And then if you, come to if you are here or you want to do 10 acres this is one acre somebody says so oh, okay i'm interested can i do 10 how much is one can i do 10 times so that's all fantastic the first stage is that we'll put everything up for you in your company's name right. here we provide management do you want to bring your own workers or you want us to help, help you, you get get workers it's okay help me somebody say okay i have my own fine so, but as we are, we are here as the management firm, we, there's a fee we will take for the land, for irrigation, for electricity, for uh, security and right. all those things. To kind maintain of the place. To maintain. It's just like buying a house. You still pay service charge, etc. Exactly. Et okay. Exactly. So, that is the model. So, one, we need private investors. Two, we are also calling on institutions that want to support youth. Right. In entrepreneurship, this is one place that you can, we can invest. Assuming this is owned, if this is owned by, let's say, even three, two people, yeah. and you are getting about eighteen thousand dollars per annum, yeah. nine thousand dollars per person yeah, it's great. per year. So you can even come as a collective. Yes, and so and come, and come yeah. together and, and then also together. the churches, the faith-based organizations. Right. The faith-based organizations can also come and take it's true. land and we will help with the management. Okay. At the end of the day, we have to be self-sufficient in the food we eat and also take opportunity of the export market that is available for us. And we can do it. Can, you're doing it. No, we can yeah. do it. Yeah. We can do it. There's no place that you will go, you will not find challenges. Not even in America, yep. Europe, everywhere you have challenges. But when people encounter challenge in a Greek, they say, oh, it's risky. Yeah. Please don't treat a Greek like that. But it's, are, you it's seeing, are you seeing banks invest in agriculture? Are we getting more people supporting? A One, a lot of banks don't understand a Greek. Mm. And they don't have people with agricultural background to advise them. So when you put your application to bank, the tools and the criteria they use to assess someone going to import tomato from Dubai, somebody who is going to real estate, is the same tool they will use to assess someone who is coming to do agri. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work 
like that. So there is sometimes, that's what I like about Exim Bank, which is a development bank. So they have picked some of the development costs, like right. bringing electricity, right. bringing water and all those. So they pick it. It becomes easier now for an investor to come because you don't need to now bring transformers yeah. and all those kind of electricity is already yeah. here. So the banks must show interest by first understanding and that's what Gessal is also trying to do. Okay. So they also want to, at a point, they will bring banks here for the banks to, to come, come and see. see. Yeah. Then they can advise their clients that there is this business opportunity, we can give you a facility. Otre, what are these pipes? Okay, so these are the dripper lines. Okay. They are, the entire um, um, farm is under automation. Okay. So we don't have to water manually. We have an automation system whereby we put the fertilizers and everything inside and then it does it. it, it, it that's it. So oh. you don't have to. So this big farm, you only have three people working in, oh. in it. Because it, it cuts the, 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 the workload yeah. yes. down. Because a, a farm like this outside, you probably need a lot the, more people. Yeah trying to water it. Okay, so can we go on? So the, for the automation, everything is programmed. Yeah. So when the, um, the water content in the soil goes down, it triggers. Then and the then automatically, the watering will start. Wow. And when there's enough water in the soil, it shuts okay. off and uh, there will be no water. Okay. So that also makes it easier. easier. And, and then the plants get the amount of water that they need. they need. Not too much, not, not too, too much, small. Not too small. Okay. So where are we going to now? We are going to the pump house. Okay. Uh, where we have automatic irrigation okay. system. But before then, um, we came here three years ago. Only three the years ago. The first time we landed on this soil was 12 May 2020. During and that COVID. was the peak hey. COVID and there was lockdown in My certain goodness. parts. Then we tell the police we are coming to our farm. Then they allow us to, to come. And when we came here from the junction somewhere to this land, no road, no electricity, no water. So we come and offload all our chippings and cement, everything, far end, and we carry them on your head, on the head, and in wheelbarrow. Even the wheelbarrow, this place was so clay that it was difficult for us to use the. Wheel. There was no way you could walk here without Wellington boots, but we were so determined. And I told myself, it's not every time that we need white people, Europeans or Americans to come and present. This is our own. We must take our yeah. destiny into our own hands. So irrespective of the challenges, we will still do yeah. it. And then it took some time before we got road. I mean, we yep. were able to, I think on, the, on our third attempt, we were able to find a place and then we started using it as one. road. And then thanks to Exim, we were able to bring electricity, high tension, Fantastic. transformer, and then we brought everything here. We connected water one and a half kilometers from the dam, from the dam to, just... to this place. So it's, it's just three years. And, only three um, years, incredible Yeah, work. Only, only, only three years. But let me give credit also to Ghanaian youth. Mm. Um, I work a lot with youth. Yeah. We know their attitude and we always complain. But I think I am the oldest person in this enclave mm. all the people you see here are young yeah, people true. young people the greenhouse is one technology that dispels the notion that young people don't want to go into agriculture, agriculture. because yeah. we get more people who want to come into the greenhouse production than we can actually take oh, that's amazing. yeah so so i give credit to young, young people well done to in the ghana youth. well done to the yeah. youth hashtag hashtag yay <laughs> you're not so old after all <laughs> <laughs> so this is our pump house okay and i will let selassie who is an engineer from knust managing this place okay to explain to us you're welcome thank, thank you, you. So this is the automated irrigation system. 
a radar system to control irrigation for and fertigation for the radar body. system yeah. irrigation and radar no, radar oh, oh radar okay to uh, fertigate and irrigate the 5000 square meter okay greenhouse uh, that greenhouse, the 5,000 square meters is in two compartments, so we get only two sections. Okay. If I want to irrigate, the irrigation is based on the intensity of sunlight that we have. Oh. So if I want to irrigate, I start by doing the system. Mm -hmm. And then I input how long I want my irrigation to be, how much sunlight I want to measure before it triggers irrigation. Okay. What electrical conductivity I want to give, and then what pH I want my solution to be. Oh. So I set all this, all this, and then I start my irrigation. Either going to the first side or, or the, the second, second side. side. Okay. So if I should play the irrigation. Okay. 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 Uh, and how long does it take? It's going to take uh, six minutes. Six minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And you can you can also control from your phone. Yes, okay. In your house. Yes. Okay. Oh. That's how it is. That's the beauty of it. So he can see how things are going on in the greenhouse and you can control, control the water, the fertigation. Fertigation is application of nutrients. Uh, how all those things can be controlled from here or on his phone. Mm. Wherever he is, he can use, as long as there's Wi-Fi, he, can use, he it. can use it to control irrigation. Brilliant. So over the weekend, you can stay in the house and, and do then. your control except you want to come and check it's always good to come and check how the plants yeah i was like a doctor will not give a drip to a patient without coming to, to see, see yeah. how the patient is responding to uh, the 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 drip yeah so it's the same way okay. you can control but you need to come and see how things are going fantastic and these projects we did it with the Netherlands Embassy. Oh, okay. Yes, it's the Netherlands Embassy. We had the notion that big greenhouses, because of our weather conditions, big greenhouses cannot work okay. efficiently in Ghana. And they also wanted to see if commercial greenhouse farmers in Europe will want to invest in, in greenhouse houses. in okay. Ghana. Before we can do that, they can do that. First, we need to put up a big greenhouse. Okay. Use it to train people in greenhouse production. Because right. skills are very important. And that is, in the greenhouse, skills are not there. So we are building skills, skills. every now and then. Um, I don't know how many people can operate this automated um, panel for greenhouse because I, he was not taught in school. Mm. At the engineering school, he was not taught. So you learn it on the on job. The job. Yeah, yeah. But we put it there and we were getting fantastic uh, results. Okay. So even here, we started with Exim Bank, but the Netherlands Embassy has also been very supportive and helpful. The ambassador has been here. The last time, their deputy agri minister wanted to come, but there was too much traffic on the way. Oh. So we had to to okay. go back. But we've had that project also for the past two, two getting to three years. And we produce, we do training as well. We do training for lecturers, training for students, training for people who want to go into greenhouse production. And we also use it to learn. To learn as and well. And upgrade our skills. Yeah. This area was part of Kwame Nkrumah's. Yes. So it's an agree. Uh, it extends all the way to the Shy Hills where uh, the monkeys Your sanctuary, sanctuary yeah. is. Okay. But now you, there are some uh, factories there. There's also quarry wow. in that area. So Kwame Nkrumah had already earmarked this. This whole place. You know, we need urban agriculture to feed the urban people. And the dam has also been there. Now we need to protect the dam because there's a lot of investment coming Right. into this agricultural enclave. So we need to plant trees, protect sure. the dam, and make sure that the investment that 
people are making here. There's a flower company too at the back. They export everything to Netherlands. And they've been here for over nine years. Mm. Yes, ex producing and exporting flowers Flower. to Netherlands. Wow. Everything they produce here, they export. The greenhouse you see here, we have 100. Okay. This one, we have 100. 100. 100, and we can do up to about 400. 400? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay, fantastic. And the empty ones? The empty ones, when you see the empty ones, mm -hmm. it means we have ended the, the production cycle. cycle. Okay. We are allowing it to, first we clean. Okay. And we disinfect. Okay. Now, this particular one we will enter, but we've allowed it here because we want to target dry season tomatoes. Okay. So we are timing. Okay. And uh, I think maybe from next month or so, mm. we will start working inside and plant. Okay. So that November, December, January, February, we'll have it, tomatoes to supply. Okay. And people okay. can have tomatoes for Christmas. Oh, brilliant. So the empty ones, uh, empty because we are timing production. You see, it's raining, yeah, so almost rainy everyone season. is producing. Yeah, uh, they will come to a point that there will be bumper harvest. Yeah, so at that time we will slow down, and you just need like one or two months delay. Okay, and that's all you are sorted. And then, is there like different types of tomatoes that you're doing? Because you know we have those those tiny tomatoes. To different call them types the of the cherry tomatoes. The cherry tomatoes. We, 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 we have some. You do? Up there. So I we'll love go, cherry tomatoes. We'll Are they ripening? Yeah. Oh, so she can get some. Oh, I ah, love it. Yay! <laughs> you see, if you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> <laughs> I love ah. cherry tomatoes. Oh, that's amazing. So what was in here? Cucumbers. 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 We had over 7,000 plants. 7,000 plants. Yeah. This one is 5,000 square meters it's meter. a little lesser than a football pitch mm, the big. other one is 640 this one is six uh, five, five thousand five thousand so about eight times that the one. size yeah yes uh -huh. and like i told you we've we ha we've harvested the cucumber we've ended the cycle yeah. we are cleaning so you see yeah them. They are cleaning it up and look at the height of the cucumber. You see? Went all the way up to all the, the top. All the way up there. Wow. Uh, all the way up there. So you end, you clean, you disinfect. We set this place up and. Uh, so you're going to do cucumbers again? No. no. Tomatoes. 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 Oh, yes, you mentioned about the tomatoes. tomatoes. We also do crop rotation. Okay, 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 yes. okay. Uh, in secondary school, they'll tell you crop rotation and you have to chew it. Bye -bye. Yeah, I can see a cucumber here. Yes. <laughs> There's like two cucumbers. It's been there for over two, three weeks. But and still, it, yeah. 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 So wow. It's amazing. So this is the the one that we did with the Dutch government. Okay. The Dutch embassy. Embassy. Or Dutch government. So 5,000 square meters. Now we've realized that it works. And this one has screens. Okay. So when the temperature becomes very high, we can close it. And then wow. this side will become cooler. Cooler. And when it is cool, we open, open the up. screens and it becomes hotter. Fantastic. So in two months to come, if you come here, mm -hmm. you'll be surprised. It's not going to be brown, but everything will be green. Green, green gold. Green, green gold. <laughs> <laughs> goes, oh, look at the height of the cucumbers. Where I they know got where they to. reached. Yes. Wow, yes. look at this one right yes. at the top. The last time we did tomatoes here, and when I came, I was like, wow, all this place with tomatoes. This whole place was full of harvested tomatoes from, from here. And um, if we, the more we can, you see, there are the sophisticated ones, there are the medium ones, there are the net houses. So, yeah. You don't need to go to the sophisticated greenhouse. We can have the simple ones. The simple but whichever one, yeah. one, I want the public to understand that greenhouse is not cheap. Yeah. It's expensive. It's expensive, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Because at the end of the day, you will get return for your investment. investment. Yeah. And initially, too, we're having challenges because expertise. You have to try so many things. And people they didn't understand from day one. They want to see the results. Yeah. I said, no, no, take time. 
As for our Greek, be patient. Yeah. It's like having a baby. You yeah. have to know how to nurture the baby. You try this baby food, it doesn't work. You try. Everyone will tell you that this baby food is good. But your, your child may have reaction. Yeah, allergy. Allergy. Mm. So if you try and it doesn't work, you don't kill your child. You try a another different thing, one. yeah. You try a different thing. But people are not patient. So every, oh, we've had gone through a lot of pressure. Mm. Oh, you told us this. And now we are getting there and say, this is a Greek. This is not treasury bill. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Greek. It's not treasury bill. So and sometimes you can time. even have better days though. So yes. you have the low days, but no. you have even... Let me say this. Mm. Our colleagues from Spain, they came here. Right. We took them to Cape Coast. They saw the yield. And they, they did their calculation and they said, ah, are we sure that we've got eight tons from this 640? Yeah. They said, yes, the records are there. Every day harvesting, yeah. we show them. They look at it and say, no, no, no. The yields we are getting was higher than the yields that they were getting in Spain. Wow. So they went and they, it was in one of their papers that a one-year-old Ghanaian farmer, greenhouse farmer, is getting better yield than a 30-year-old green, uh, Spanish greenhouse farmer. Wow. So, and when we started growing the tomatoes here, there was one Dutch expert who came. His protocols were not working. And it's simply because the plants here grow faster than in Holland and in oh, Europe. Really? I think two weeks or three ahead. weeks ahead. So to him, you need to apply at this stage. The plants have passed. So his application has delayed. Right. Yes. Uh, these are the positives that we have in greenhouse production. I would not say that we are perfect. But it's work in progress. progress yeah. and if we start installation, sometimes every day you have about 60 to 80 people doing installation of the game. We don't bring people from outside. We have our own engineers. Yeah. We do everything. So we've built internal capacity and we want to do a lot of trainings. We've gotten UDS. They want some of the greenhouse. So many, they want some, some of, of the, the green. greenhouse. Okay. You nail Sunyani, they want some of okay. the greenhouse. Uh, almost every institution, Once. they want some of the greenhouse, which is good because yeah. the one that we have at KNUST, sometimes as early as 8 39, we finish selling. Seven o'clock, people are there, 6 30, people are there coming to buy. Oh. Fresh bread, and we are supplying. Let's say we are doing maybe about two five percent of the market at Kenyan USD. So imagine we scale it, yeah. Then that whole community will not depend on any import of vegetables. That whole community will feed from the vegetables that we produce on. For corporate organizations, they have pension packages. Now we know that the data we are getting from here. Maximum five years, you will have paid off all the investments that you have made sure. in the greenhouse. So assuming you have senior level managers, somebody is 40, 50 yeah. years, he will be going on retirement um, at 60. Yeah. So if at 50, as part of the package, you give the person has access to one greenhouse, greenhouse. by 55, he has finished paying the, for the greenhouses. So it's just like deductions. So the corporate has invested. It's just the deductions. By 55, he has finished paying. And this becomes something permanent yeah. for the person. That's a good idea. Even if it's at 40 and you have a package of that nature, one, you are securing something permanent for your performing staff. Yep. Two, you are also creating jobs for young people, including your own kids. Yep. Three, we are producing more vegetables for the country to reduce import. And you are supporting productive sector. So I keep saying that corporate institutions, the net house, now we want to go into export. Corporate institutions, we have only one net house for it. Invest. How yeah. do we move to 20 yeah. net yeah. houses? Invest. And then the agreements are there, the figures are there. Yeah. You are not supposed to come and manage it. Yep. We are here 
we are managing. If you also want to bring another management, uh, another management person yeah. to come and help you, you put it there. It becomes your eye and ear. Everything is recorded. Yeah. That is how we can solve our own problems. So yes, we want to also encourage corporate institutions to look at the greenhouse as a good package for their own staff. And I think we will change the narrative we'll soon. Definitely change the narrative. Yeah. It's changing. It's changing. For and the you likes have come of you. here, so we will change it. <laughs> it will change. It will change <laughs> even more. But um, I know my audience is watching, and I know that they've been, they have been inspired by Mr. Dan's work in the industry for over 20 years. Guys, you don't have to do the 20 years. He's already done it for you. He's gone through the drill. He knows how to gain input in this industry. So please contact us if you'd like to invest in greenhouses. The cherry tomatoes. Yeah. But unfortunately, we can't enter. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but we'll have some for you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Please. <laughs> but see how the cluster, the fruits yeah. down there. And this is how all old, over. How old? This one is, I think, eight, nine weeks. Nine weeks old. Nine I'm weeks. Uncle Dan, tell us about the fresh logistics. So, Agri Impact, we have about five companies. Okay. So now we have the Agri Impact Group. Okay. And then we have ASNAP, which is an NGO, and we even have office in Senegal and South Africa wow. operating there. And uh, that's also for us. Then we have Fresh Logistics. Fresh Logistics is involved in the marketing of all the vegetables that we produce under the greenhouse. So it's also operating as a separate entity. Okay. It has its own account. Okay. So when the vegetables are produced here, Agri Impact sells to Fresh Logistics and they go and do the marketing, marketing and come okay. and pay back okay. to the beneficiary. So now we are not retailing much, but if you are doing, let's say, a, a program mm -hmm. and you want us to supply either salad okay. or give supply you with the fresh vegetables, then we will deliver because like we said, if you harvest tomatoes from here and you put it under your room temperature yeah. in the kitchen, three to four weeks, it stays the, the same. same. The cook, everything you get here is fresh. It's fresh and clean. And that's why we adopted the word fresh, fresh, log fresh logistics. logistics. Well, you know, <laughs> my people out there, as you know, this is from my heart to you. This is something that we've been promoting coming back, investing in Ghana, and I'm bringing you an investment opportunity. All of these things that you see is the investment opportunity. So guys, the details are there. Make sure you also subscribe to the YouTube channel. See you next week. Bye-bye.